managers and a VP that was Jim. So I was forced to change my name. So I adopted JD. I was actually I was actually referring to Cox Automotive as opposed to uh, oh. Group. <laughs> sorry. Uh, sorry, because no, no a lot of people know me as Jim. <laughs> oh, OK. I didn't know that. All right. I've only seen you in my email uh, as JD. Podcast. Uh, this is John Mark Walker, and I'm here with JD Calder from now Cox Automotive. Uh, Cox Automotive. I have to remind myself to say Cox because they used to be until a few weeks ago uh, Auto Trader Group. Uh, welcome, JD. I'm glad to glad to see you here. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. And you are coming to us from live in downtown Atlanta, right? Is that is that what I'm saying? Well, yeah, that's uh, Atlanta in the background there. Yeah, we're on the suburbs. We're up at the Perimeter Center. Ah, okay, okay, fantastic. I, uh, I I was in Atlanta for the uh, Open Stack Summit. I think it was the first time I'd been there in like 20 years. Um, it's changed a lot over the <laughs> over the last couple of decades. So uh, pretty much everything's changing like that, except for the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that 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 is one constant you can always depend on. Uh, so we're the reason we uh, you're stopping by because I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, what you're doing with cloud forms and now manage iq and your involvement in the manage iq community uh, could you could you give me a little bit of a background about how you came to be a cloud forms customer and why you're involved in the manage iq community okay yeah this happened before uh, i joined that um it was auto trader group at the time now cox automotives but um, um they had a bake-off uh, with several different uh, vendors and manage iq uh, won and we implemented manage iq here at cox automotive um, then uh, Red Hat acquired them, and um, we installed Red Hat Cloud Forms. Uh, so we've been running 2.0 for some period. We just upgraded to 3.0 recently, uh, and cool. that's currently what we're running. I'm playing with 3.1 in the lab currently. Yes, yeah, that that is the that is the new hotness, uh, which is uh, the first it release is. based on uh, based on an upstream Manage IQ release. So it's a it's a big uh, development all around, both for the Manage IQ release that happened last month and the uh, Cloud Forms release that's that's based on it. It's a it's a milestone in the in the development. Yes, it's exciting, so I, uh, especially some of the things what they're doing with automation. Excellent. And what what is your background? What do you uh, what 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 brings you to your current position? Have you have you always been kind of a virtualization cloud guy, automation guy? What what's your what's I, your I, in a previous life, I was a Java developer. Uh, worked a lot of the uh, from the glass back to the API mostly. Um, so I did a lot of Java development, but I spent a number of years in the military. Uh, so I worked on a lot of Unix flavors. Um, nice. So that um, I I also did a lot of um, you know Bash programming, Perl programming, uh, a lot of you know a lot of different variety of things. I guess I'm a polyglot you know programmer there. But um, I started moving away from the Java side and into .NET, and then um, came across this opportunity with um, AutoTrader. Group and uh, now Cox Automotive and uh, got in and was real excited. Uh, the person and team that I was working with was uh, dynamic, and they had a lot of plans for uh, doing a lot of automation. Uh, they want to push button automation for their infrastructure, so it was an exciting opportunity, and I jumped in feet first. And I, I do have to apologize for uh, for hiring away Brad Ascar. Uh, he he liked that he liked Cloudform so much he joined the company, and uh, you know. I <laughs> that yes, that was a um, had I known that because <laughs> I truly enjoyed working with him and uh, yeah, I think really I, I kind of claim driving him away because after working with me <laughs> just a couple of months, he he said hopeless cause and I'm out of here. <laughs> no, we 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 love Brad too. He's uh, he's good. In fact, he was also on this podcast a couple of days ago. Um, so, yes. so tell me what what kind of special things are you doing with uh, Manage IQ these days? I know you've got. Uh, uh, a session coming up at the Design Summit next week. Um, tell me a little bit how you kind of bend it to your will. Uh, there's there's several different things, but really the push button automation is what we're looking at. Uh, you know, we used to have uh, developers come on uh, quite often, our contractors, and it was almost a two week uh, period for the time they put in a service ticket to actually before they got a VM because of all the manual processing and people sitting on people's desks and waiting. And with right. the automation. We're able to basically a, a manager or the person exact you know that individual can request their own taxi machine, which we call it, is a developer machine, and within 20 minutes, you know, they're up and running. Um, so we've taken that and 
you know, there's certain things that we needed. We need a, a dependable IP management system so that we can, you know, put these, you know, VMs out there and make them available immediately. Um, as well, we've um, done a lot of different reporting and um, we also do a soft retirement for these VMs so that if a developer leaves, it goes into a dormant period, powered down, uh, but not wow. deleted okay. for a period of time. So. That's great. Um, yeah, so it's all about the automation and uh, self-service. Then sounds like. What, did you build yeah. your own? Um, did you build your own uh, service catalog, or did you use kind of like the one that comes with uh, Manage IQ? We did. We yeah. Uh, we we extended a lot of the capabilities that were uh, already in Manage IQ. Um, you know, that's one of the great things about uh, Manage IQ or CloudForms is you know it's, it's highly extensible. It's highly flexible. You can do a lot of different things with it to the point that it's almost difficult for a newbie to jump in and really um, understand everything that's happening. So um, we took existing, some of the existing code. Um, I worked with some of the folks at Red Hat to extend it to what we needed. Uh, one of the things we needed was to be able to have push button uh, generate X number of VMs with a, a single request. Um, and that also added some challenges with the IPAM, uh, making sure that it was thread safe. Um, so, uh, but I uh, worked with the Red Hat support team and yeah, everything's, um, you know, it's been great um, getting these things out there. So, so for those of us who are uh, uh, less knowledgeable than others, uh, explain to me the IPAM and, and what it was about it that you need to extend uh, with Manage IQ. Well, basically an IPAM is an address management, um, IP ad uh, management system that um, basically uh, it's gonna have an IP, it's gonna have the gateway, the network, the subnet mast, um, all the things that you would need to register a, a machine on the VM, uh, on the uh, network. Um, host name can be either included or we actually have it um, optional where we have a flag that we can set it either dynamic where we'll provide the name or we'll take the name from the IPAM. But basically you could think of them almost of a, a database table and each IP right. when the name and all that subnet information is one row. Um, so okay. we can actually have it um, hitting different subnets, you know, if we needed to. Great. Okay. Uh, no, I can see why, why you would why you would need that. Now, when when you're using Manage IQ um, on the back end, are you serve it? Are you uh, does your um, uh, does your service catalog interface with you know a, a VMware deployment or is it a Rev or yeah. is there an AWS section? Yeah, we're primarily. Yeah. Yes, we are primarily a VM shop. Uh, we do mostly uh, RHEL uh, and Windows. Um, and we have a little bit of Solaris in there, but RHEL and Windows is what we're running mostly. Um, and, and we do have a presence in AWS. It's not okay. much right now, but that is a big push in the company is uh, and start looking at cloud first. I'm sure uh, that, that, you know, everyone seems to be going in that same direction. Uh, how do you guys <laughs> handle like kind of the, uh, how do you guys handle the, you know, data privacy and governance issues that they're facing, you know, public cloud uh, deployment? You know, a lot of companies are, reluctant to go all in on public cloud for that reason. How do you guys? Yeah, it's going to be a virtual, you... it's, it would be a virtual private cloud is what they're really looking at. Um, okay. I haven't been deep into the, uh, the AWS initiatives right now. Uh, they're doing a lot of exploration. Um, the things that we're looking at are Greenfield type deployments. Um, there's not too much um, being um, converted over to AWS as much, uh, you know, to write it stateless like that is going to be a, a, an effort that we haven't um, decided on yet, just yet. Okay. Well, it's it's uh, it's definitely uh, it seems to be the public seems to be the wave of the future. But I, you know, I, I think there's always going to be a place for that, so, you know, private uh, data center that you you can, you have the complete control over. Especially when it comes. It's always to exciting to walk into the data center. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. No. Especially when it comes to issues like compliance. Uh, it, it, but the beauty is with something like Manage IQ, you have you know the option to go either way or both if you choose. Yes, yes, and that's great right now because, um, you know, and I know that's some of the future goals as well is, you know, have a single pane of glass that you can look at all your your providers, you know, be it on-premise or in the cloud. Um, and that's that's a great thing that uh, Manage IQ provides us because we actually do that. We have one region with four data centers uh, being managed under, so that's a single pane of glass basically. Cool, that's awesome. Um, what, uh, so next week is a design summit. You guys have a session uh, on October 8th uh, where you're talking about your IPAM stuff. I mean, walk me through what you're going to be talking about uh, when you're there. Well, I, you know, 
implementing an IPAM is just as glamorous as it sounds. It's not. <laughs> it's pretty basic, but uh, the things, you know, it, it's mandatory. It's a core feature uh, to be able to have an IP that uh, system that you can depend on that's going to be there every time and that, that we're not going to have um, duplicate IPs being issued. So um, it's a core feature. Um, we're going to walk through some of the things that we've done. Um, you know, like I said, uh, Brad Askar, you know, got me started, but I only had a couple of weeks with him really of good development time before he left. So a lot of what I've learned, learned is uh, on my on my own and through wow. the, uh, the groups. And uh, I must say the, the news groups and the, the community has grown quite a bit in the last few months. But yes. when I first got into it over a year ago, uh, they were quite lacking. <laughs> and uh, the help files weren't always helpful. No. So no. It, it was, it was, a, it was a, uh, a lot of trials and tribulations and, and testing and seeing how things can be done. Um, so I got in there and, and played with a lot of things and um, had some failures. So, you know, you learn things from each time something doesn't work. So um, I, we're going to walk through the, the whole system and, and things that we've added. One of the big things that we needed was to be thread safe. Um, okay. So okay. We, we worked on a mechanism with reserve token so that now we reserve an IP instance when if multiple requests are coming in at the same time. Fantastic. Oh. Okay. That's great. Uh, no, you, you guys are going to be a, a very valuable resource to the, the rest of the user community. I can, I can already see that. And I, I, I have to put in a plug here. We're going to be creating an extensions depot for manageiq.org okay. where the, talk, the stuff that uh, JD is talking about, we'll, he'll be able to share that and upload that. Uh, so that other people can benefit from all the work they've done. Uh, and it'll, it'll work both ways. Uh, other people will upload their stuff as well. So look for that uh, in the next couple of months. In fact, I'll be giving a talk about that, about that project uh, uh, on, that, the, on the same day, on October 8th, talking about the extensions depot and how we're going to implement that. So uh, good stuff all around. Uh, so just a reminder, uh, you can go to manageiq.org. You can sign up for the Design Summit today. Uh, you'll get to meet JD and a host of other smart people. And I hope you'll join us. It's shaping up to be a really great event. Uh, JD, thank you so much for coming by. It's been great talking to you. John Mark, I appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again in person. Awesome. Thank you.